As promised, we get started today with a very hot topic, xenotransplantation. As the shortage of donated organs remains a constant concern, researchers are more frequently exploring the transplantation of organs and tissues from other species. Here now to weigh in is Dr. Mohammed Mohiuddin from the University of Maryland. Pleasure to have you today. Thank you, Adria. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Okay, the University of Maryland and your team, you, really, you guys have really been at the forefront of xenotransplantation. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've been working on? So, I mean, you know, uh, we've been working in the field of xenotransplantation, at least I am, for the last 33 years. And um, rec uh, recently at the University of Maryland, we made a transition from what we have learned from pig to baboon transplantation, uh, which is uh, a preclinical model where we have learned how to overcome uh, rejection of a pig organ in a baboon. And as, as you know, we cannot use human as a, as a, as a subject to do all these experiments. Uh, we first learned in the baboons, and then when we f felt comfortable, we approached the FDA to, to get permission to, do, uh, um, to test it out in, in a human model. Um, uh, although we, we don't have uh, a uh, permission for clinical trial, mm -hmm. uh, however, um, uh, in the case where patients don't have any other options, and uh, every, every other option has been already tried on them, or they are not eligible for it, uh, the FDA allows you to, to test, um, test uh, these uh, unproven mm -hmm. uh, um, methods or drugs in a, in a human just to save life. And it's called uh, compassionate, it used to call compassionate care, mm -hmm. but now it's called single patient IND or, um, uh, or, or there's other names for it. And you are now utilizing uh, some genetically engineered pig organs. What does it mean when you say genetically engineered? So, um, if you transplant a pig organ in a, in a human uh, or in a baboon, it rejects right in front of your eye. Um, this rejection is very different from human to human transplant, uh, and it's because of uh, a lot of antibodies that are present in our, uh, in our body. Um, they recognize the pig as a foreign uh, object and attack it and cause rejection. So um, the effort of the field, not just myself, uh, for of many, have been to overcome that uh, rejection process with what we call hyperacute rejection, and that happens. Uh, uh, and we have identified certain antigens on pigs which are immunogenic to humans, and we have antibodies against it. So we have tried to remove those. And thanks to the CASPER-Cas9 technology, we can do that uh, in one step, and we can remove multiple genes, and, uh, and, uh, and also we can uh, we can tra put transgenes from humans uh, into into pigs, and that's what we have done also to overcome some of the incompatibilities between pig and human. And you're seeing some success. You're seeing some of these organs not be rejected outright and immediately. That's, that's, uh, that's the major thing because when we went into, we were the first one to do test it out in human and we, we, we did not know that whether this patient will survive that surgery and the heart will reject on the table or how long that will survive. And, and that's why we didn't make any promises either uh, to the patient or to anyone. And, and we did not know what we are getting into. But we were, we were surprised to see that this, this uh, I mean, it was expected, but, but uh, it was a relief, basically, mm -hmm. to see that uh, this, this heart did not reject. And in fact, according to uh, our team of cardiologists, it worked better uh, than, uh, than a human heart. Wow. Uh, and and it continued, the, our first heart continued to work uh, well and, you know, pump uh, uh, what my colleague, Dr. Griffith, uh, calls it like a Ferrari engine, uh, <laughs> you know, for, uh, for almost uh, 40, 50 days before it, it went through some, uh, some complications. Mm -hmm. And is there uh, the hope then that you can take this sort of modification and apply it to other species' organs? Uh, uh, it's, it's very difficult. You have to, you know, reinvent the cycle. Oh, okay. um, uh, uh, it takes, uh, it, it took us a while to understand the genetics of, uh, of the pig and to learn how to modify okay. it. Uh, there are other, um, um, you know, um, species that ha which have been tried, like uh, non-human primates that include baboons and chimpanzees. However, uh, they, they take a long time to grow, and also the, the fear of transmission of disease like HIV uh, prevented uh, that, that transition. And um, as you may know, baby Feyhart and uh, several liver and kidney transplants have been tried before uh, without much success. But, but now we, we, we are 
progressing to uh, clinical uh, arena with a lot of background of uh, um, preclinical studies mm. in baboons and now in decedent models. Okay. All right, there are ethical concerns, obviously. Yes. What do you say to those? What I guess I should say, what are the ethical concerns and what do you say to those? So there are ethical concerns both um, with the animal use and also uh, with, uh, with using the patient and you know, uh, whether or not the pa patient have provided the right consent. Mm -hmm. So, and FDA is very, very concerned about it and they, and we, when we did the first patient, we prepared a very exhaustive, uh, um, uh, con consent and uh, made patient aware uh, that what can happen to him mm -hmm. and you know we didn't give him any uh, any hope uh, because this was uh, experimental mm -hmm. we said that this has worked in an animal model and we hope to uh, give you uh, you know extra days of life uh, but we don't know uh, and um, and and for him to give a consent we had to get uh, you know psychi psychiatric opinion for from several psychiatrists to, to make sure that what he, what he's consenting to, he's make, doing it in, a, in the right way. He mind. understands. He understands yeah. it. And, and four psychiatrists covered, uh, you know, cleared our first patient, two internal and two external. Yeah. And, and on the animal side, you know, I would say that we, 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 we sacrifice about 90,000 pigs a day in the United States for for consumption in food and uh, other things, and uh, if you look at uh, all the products we use, then uh, you know the, the, there are some big uh, elements involved in those products, uh, um, like your makeup, and mm -hmm. you know uh, the, the we've been using heart valves, the, the insulin that we've been using, and also the heparin, uh, one of the major drug to right. prevent blood from clotting. That also has uh, is derived from. So I mean, you know, th uh, if we if we were ha if we cannot, uh, uh, you know, experiment on uh, on the pigs and not use them. You know, we cannot jump directly to the uh, to humans. And uh, animals have made a great sacrifice um, to make us learn all this uh, mm -hmm. throughout this, these years. An ongoing conversation within the transplant world is the shortage of donated organs. Do you right. think xenotransplantation is the answer to that? Uh, I mean, you are asking the wrong person. I'm very <laughs> biased because that's my field. That's that's have devoted in my entire life to. However, there are other competing uh, technologies emerging, like 3D printing, uh, uh, organogenesis, like growing a big organ, uh, a, a, a human organ in a, in an animal. Uh, you know, and, and several other technologies. Uh, we are not competing with these technologies. Our goal is to save lives and as many lives as possible. And this is uh, this is uh, what we are striving at. Which, whichever uh, if we, we leave it to the patient to decide, you know, if there are ten different options available, which one he is going to use. Right. And and I think, in my personal opinion, genotransplantation an excellent, uh, you know, option because we can intervene at an earlier time point. Also, we can offer someone a pig heart, a healthy pig heart, versus you know, a, a heart, human heart uh, that is, uh, uh, you know, from a, for an older patient with other uh, diseases. Right. Um, yeah. You know, we've been talking all this week about it, celebrating 70 years since the first successful human organ transplant. Where do you see xenotransplantation 70 years from now? Well, definitely, I, uh, I mean, um, we think we are very close and uh, we, we think that this, this will be in a fantastic option to offer to our patients, um, uh, along with other options. And if they they don't have any uh, any other options, or they are not eligible for any other options, this will be uh, a great op option to pick. And um, a, a, a typical pig uh, uh, heart uh, big li lifespan is about 20 years. Okay. The pig that we used is about was a one year of age. So you know, theoret theoretically, you are adding 19 more years to that yeah. life, right? I mean, if, if rejection doesn't happen right. and other complications. So I'm very optimistic. It sounds like the research and the science is, is there. We're getting very close as far exactly. as the science portion goes. How much of clearing the regulatory hurdles is an issue? I mean, we were afraid that regulatory, uh, the FDA and other regulatory agencies will will have some issues with this, but we found them to be very helpful. They asked the pertinent questions, very direct questions, and we were able to supply them with those answers. So um, not only us, the other centers who have done it, uh, you know, we are very confident that this, this, will, this field will, pro will only progress with a combined effort. Okay. Uh, so I would like to 
through you uh, to convey that you know we, we all should combine our efforts together and do not, should not work in silos uh, right. and and you know the, this the learning we, we have produced by doing these four uh, you know human transplant in living the two hearts and two kidneys and now one in liver or in China that will you know be a tremendous help in progressing this mm -hmm. field all right well it is certainly a fascinating frontier in the world of transplantation thank we thank you for all of your work and for your time today thank you very much Thanks.